host, Zach Murphy, here, and thank you so much for taking the time to tune into my channel today. In this teaching, we are going to continue in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. Previously, I taught on the first 14 verses, and we talked about Jesus feeding the 5,000, a great multitude he fed, and the great miracle that was. And today, we're going to cover verses 15 to 21, and we're going to be talking about Jesus walking on the sea, and how that applies to us today in context of the New Covenant. And we're going to talk about faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God, and faith is an important aspect of salvation. So we're going to be studying a good bit here as we go into these verses, along with the topic of faith. So let me open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word as we continue studying the Gospel of John. I pray that everyone watching this is edified and that this teaching would bring forth much good fruit for your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so in this teaching we are going over again John chapter 6 verses 15 to 21. And this is a short selection of scriptures, but there is some powerful truth in here about faith. And if you follow along with the previous teaching, I want to just give you a note for context. The previous verses of John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, we talked about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So now we're going to see something else great that Jesus Christ did here. Verse 15, therefore when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, <coughs> he departed again to the mountain by himself alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went to the sea, got into the boat, and went over toward Capernaum. And when it was already dark, Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose because of a great wind blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were afraid, but he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly perceived him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Very powerful there. So, break this down here. <clears throat> One of the things that this starts off with in verse 15 is... They were going to take Jesus to make him king. But men don't need a new government system. That's not what mankind's greatest need is. Mankind's greatest need is to be saved from the curse of the law. To be saved out of our Adam sin nature. Our Adam sin nature that we are all due punishment for by eternity in the lake of fire that is the ultimate punishment for that nature but praise God for what Jesus did and Jesus knew that his mission was not to overthrow some government on the earth his mission was to pay the price so that man can get a new heart be made a new creation be restored to be in right relationship with the father Jesus lived a perfect, sin-free life as a man on this earth. And that's why he departed, because he knew his mission was not to become an earthly king, because Jesus' kingdom is not of this earth. I want to point out Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put in you a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of you, out of your flesh, excuse me, and give you a heart of flesh. This is 
this is already fulfilled because of the new birth. Is this fulfilled in your life? Do you still have your old heart in you? Or do you have a new heart because you're a new creation in Christ? This is accessible to us today through the power of the new birth. And Jesus' kingdom is not of this earth. We see in John 18.36, Jesus saying, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I, would, I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. <clears throat> we must recognize this because so often we are so easily earthly bound, concerned about earthly things, people get so bent out of shape over things going on in our government, things going on with elections, and yes, I am 100% for Christians standing for truth, standing for life and godliness in our government. But our focus must be on the kingdom of God primarily because our citizenship is not in America. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we need to realize that. So yes, you know, there is a place for being vocal about what the word of God says. And there is a place for us to influence areas of government with kingdom-minded principles. But our focus must be on the kingdom of God and not the kingdoms of this world, whether you live in America or Canada or in Europe, it doesn't matter. Our focus is to be on the kingdom of God. And Jesus wasn't preaching a message about how to overthrow a government system. It was about how to live in the kingdom of God. And salvation. Another scripture I want to point out here in Matthew chapter 14 verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was there alone. So Matthew 14 is a parallel passage to this. To our reading here in John, there's a lot of different parallel passages for the different things that are accounted for in the Gospels. So the reason Jesus went up to the mountain by himself was to pray, and Jesus often went alone to pray. And that is something very basic to the Christian life that Jesus set an example for, was for us to have alone time with the Father. And you know, Jesus came to this earth, he was he is the light of the world, and yet he had a body. And he went alone to pray to the Father. This is what we were called to do. We were called to have alone time with the Father in prayer and in worship and meditating on the Word. Of God. We see here in the parallel passage in Mark chapter 6, verse 45, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he sent the multitude away. Now, this lake here, Lake of Capernaum, was about seven miles, and we see here that. In verse 19 of John chapter 6, they were about three or four miles into this seven-mile lake. So they were about halfway through when this wind arose and there was a bit of turbulence on the sea for them. And it was already dark, we see. Matthew 14, 27 tells us, But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Be of good cheer, no matter what the storm is you're in. And I want to remind us that in Matthew chapter 8, verse 24, 
there was another event that took place when the disciples were on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. And a storm came and Jesus spoke to the storm to calm down. And this was before Jesus walked on the water. When he was walking on the sea. The disciples already saw Jesus command the storm to cease. And yet we see here in John that again while they were in the middle of a dark windy sea. They got fearful, but Jesus came and said, don't be afraid. Be of good cheer. In fact, do not fear shows up 365 times in the Bible. 365 times. And yet how easy is it for us to still worry? With everything that went on in the year 2020, look how much fear people gave themselves into. And people are still afraid. <clears throat> people are still afraid. Now there's a difference between walking in fear and walking in common sense. You know, people got so fearful over some bug and yes I acknowledge that the illness that is going around can affect people very seriously and some people get over it very easily but there is a big difference between walking in fear and using common sense and what we saw in 2020 and still see today is many people are still operating in fear and many churches operate in fear by closing down. We should not be giving in to fear. Another thing here, when they received him, we see that they were at four or three miles across a seven-mile lake. And immediately when they received Jesus, the boat immediately got to the land where they were going. We see here that the light, Jesus, is the light of the world. And he came to them in the boat while they were in the midst of this dark night. And it was windy in the middle of the sea. Help came to them in the middle of the dark. And Jesus saw that they were afraid. And you know, we need to realize that When we are waiting for Jesus to show up in the middle of whatever we are going through, we often forget that he is already with us. So often we go through some trial in life, some storm in life, whether it's with your health, your family, job, finances, or just what's going on in the world. So often we just pray, oh Lord, show up and do something. Well, realize that Jesus is already here with you. If you're born again, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the light of the world within us. We have we are light bearers. And we need to realize that so often we get so moved by our circumstances, so moved by our situations that we forget that who we are in Christ. We can't let that rob us of not just the head knowledge, but the heart knowledge of knowing and knowing who we are in Christ, that we are light bearers and we should not be overtaken when darkness is around us. And I want to point out here because so often this gets brushed over, this event that took place and even the one of Jesus speaking to the storm. It was before the cross, before Pentecost. 
Today we have salvation. We are in right standing with the Father. And we have the infilling and overflowing experience of the Holy Spirit. And yet, we are so easy to fall into the trap of fear. <clears throat> we have the light within us. We are light bearers. Let that sink in. Let that sink in, people. When you go through something, is your first reaction, oh, Lord, come rescue me out of the situation? So often that's our reaction. But we need to realize that if we are truly born again and filled with the Spirit of God, we have everything already within us that we need for whatever trial we go through, for whatever situation we go through. We have victory within Christ. We need to realize that. Our prayer doesn't need to be, Lord, come rescue me out of this. It should be, Lord, give me the strength through this. Help me to realize who I am in Christ. Let me not lose my identity in Christ as I go through whatever the situation is. Help me to realize the victory I already have and then declare the promises within God's word over the situation and keep your eyes on the word of God keep focus on the word of God not focus on the problem 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 tells us or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you whom you have from God and you are not your own we have the Holy Spirit within us so why should we be bent out of shape when we're in the middle of a dark situation or a storm. Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. Don't let the trials of the devil rob you of your identity in Christ. Or the joy of the Lord in your life. And Romans chapter 8 verse 11 tells us. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dead dwells in you he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is alive in us we bear that spirit within us and every day we need to stay constantly full of it you know, when you get born again, you receive the Holy Spirit, and then there's the Pentecostal experience of receiving the overflowing of the Spirit. And we need to constantly be seeking God for continual inflowings of the Spirit so we can pour out for what God has gifted us with and be filled back up again. Fill us up for till we overflow. So many Christians are easily, you know, thrown out of whack because of a circumstance, but fail to set their mind on their identity that because they're born again, because they're, that they are a blood-bought child of God, that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead after Jesus died of a gruesome death, same spirit that rose him dwells in us and yet we get bent out of shape over a sickness over some trial come on people we need to realize who we are in Christ You know, you can have <clears throat> all the head knowledge you want of the Word of God. But if you don't let it saturate your inner being, you're not going to be able to walk in the fullness of the victory that you have available to yourself through the complete work of Jesus Christ. 
And you know, walking in victory as a Christian is not about boasting for yourself. It's about boasting about what Christ has done. Victory in Christ is not about boosting our ego, but magnifying the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we need to realize that if he is the king of kings, then as a child of God, we are also a king in him and through him. Not that we are above him or anything, but we are subject to him. He is our master. But we have kingly authority that we are given through Jesus Christ. And I can go in much more on that. And that's for another teaching. But if he is king of kings, then we are kings under him. The Bible tells us that we are seated at the right hand of the, we are seated in heavenly places with him. It's not about elevating our ego. It's about realizing what the scripture simply says about us. You need to realize this, people. There's so many people right now that are going through different situations in life. And, you know, there's so many challenges that are going on in our country with the economy and everything. And, yes, you know, we should hold our leaders accountable. By voting and, you know, by making phone calls and writing letters and so on and so forth. But we need to realize that God is our provider. Don't let the economic situation that's going on, and that it seems that is getting worse. Don't let that rob you of your joy in the Lord. Know that he is your provider. Know that he is your healer. Don't be, don't let a pandemic or another pandemic that they make, I should say pandemic, but don't let that rob you of your joy. He is our healer. And you know, it doesn't mean that we neglect seeking medical care when we should. But we know that the word of God is powerful and will not return void. It's time that we truly walk as light bearers. We shouldn't be walking along with the world in fear and worry and panic, we should be walking full of joy because we contain the light of the world in us. Don't let the situations that are going on right now hinder that people. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. And you know there's people out there in the prophetic who were saying the week of Rosh Hashanah, which was the last week of September, that there was going to be some catastrophic event that took place and there really wasn't anything that took place in America. They said that there was going to be something that was going to change everything like instantly. And that there are some people who were saying that the rapture was going to happen that week, and it, and it didn't. And you know, I want to warn people to 
don't always believe every voice in the prophetic. You know, we can't focus on these popcorn prophets that we have out there today. We can't. That's not what the gift of prophecy is about. It's about edification, exhortation, and exaltation. That's what it is about. And too many people have gone way off balance because somebody predicted a world event. And then therefore, people follow anybody that will predict world events that never happen. Look at the books that came out about the four blood moons a few years ago. I remember my first year in college. My first year in community college in 2014 and 2015. That was a big talk, and yet, what was all talked about that never came to be. We are not to be giving our attention to these popcorn prophets, people. And I'm saying that because when people do that, they get so glued on to current events. And they're robbed of their joy. They're robbed of their joy when the things don't come to pass. We are not to be anchored in that. We are to be anchored in the Word of God. And I'm saying that because I see a lot of people falling into that trap. People really got bent out of shape over the 2020 election. It was sickening the things that took place in the prophetic. It was absolutely sickening. And you know, I'm not saying anything negative about Donald Trump. That's who I voted for. I don't agree with everything he says, but I voted based off the platform. We can't get anchored in these popcorn prophets because when you do and these storms come and things don't go as they said that they were, it'll be very easy for you to be robbed of your joy. And you'll be filled with anger over what's going on. Instead of being filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. And yes, there's a place for righteous anger. There is a place for that. We need to stay in balance, people. Not veering off from one extreme to another just because of what's going on in the world. Don't be anchored in your newspaper. Don't be anchored over somebody making predictions. Be anchored in the Word of God and be led by the Spirit of God. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, people. And I know that may not have a lot to do with what we just read, but it does in a sense. We need to really look at what we are giving ear to because if we're giving ear to the wrong things, when trials come, are we rooted in the right thing or not? If you're rooted in the right thing, then good. If you're not, then you know it's going to be tougher. We have to be rooted in Christ and in his word, not in the winds and waves of the world. We have to rise above all that stuff. And yes, it's hard and yes, it's easy to get attracted to these things because there's so many things going on right now in the world. And there's so many different theories. You know, I have my own theories. You know, there's nothing wrong with having your theories about what's going on. You know, there's people that, you know, believe that the election was stolen. And, you know, I question the election. Absolutely. But we shouldn't be primarily rooted in that. We need to be rooted in the word of God and stand for what God's word says. And we need to be praying for truth and justice to prevail in our country right now. Not because we're believing all these different theories, but because we are 
people of the kingdom of God, and we stand for truth. And we need to be praying that lies get exposed right now. We need to be praying that truth is shown. Because I believe that there has been major deception. Major deception with many things that have gone on over the past two years. And we need to be praying for people's eyes to be opened. Okay, and that is the last slide for today's teaching. I hope you have enjoyed this teaching. I hope that this has blessed you and that you have learned something new. I hope that this has motivated you to study these things out for yourself. Do your own study. Make your own notes. And there's notes available on my website in the description below for this teaching. So make those notes your own notes and build from those. That's what these teachings are going to do. These aren't just for you to listen to, and that's all there is. But I want you to be able to go in and listen to these further and study for yourself and build your own Bible study as we go through this. So once again, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe down below, and God bless you, and have a great week. Thank you so much for tuning into today's message. For more information about my teachings and other content, you can head to my blog, steadfast-ztm.com. There will you, you will find links to my other videos as well as blog posts and other resources that are available for you. Additionally, I have a nine-day devotional available on walking in the Spirit, which covers the nine fruits of the Spirit which you can purchase down on Amazon. is available in print and Kindle edition, and it is also an eligible book for Kindle Unlimited if you have subscribed to Kindle Limited. Thank you.